Hello. A while back, I posted a video of a relatively inexpensive Saumur that I thought was quite good value. But I was somewhat taken to task in some of the feedback that was posted in that it wasn't one of the leading wines from the Appalachian. Now, bear in mind, Samoa is a region where somewhere in the region of about 70% of the fruit is sent to cooperatives to be vinified. So that was possibly a more typical wine from the region. However, the suggestion was that it would be interesting to see one of the top producers. So I thought I'd try and rise to that challenge. So I have here a bottle of Le Perrier 2021 Samoa Blanc, and this is from Arno Lambert. This is actually the story of a father and son, even Arno Lambert. They didn't come from a traditional winemaking family, but in 1996, already a wine lover, Eve took a huge step in changing the direction of his career completely, and he established Domaine Saint-Just in saint cyr on Borg, which evidently was where he was originally from. Now I assume given the fact that they have quite good resources of old vines that he didn't actually plant all these vineyards, that he bought at least a large portion of them, they were existing vineyards. So his son Arnaud went to study viticulture and, and enology, graduating in 2005 and joining his father in the business. And the aim of the domain really was to use Chenin Blanc and Cabernet Franc to best show off the potential of the terroirs of this tiny region, Sancia on Borg. Four years later, in 2009, they pulled off something of a coup in arranging a 25-year agreement to make the wines of, Ch of Chateau de Brise. These were 20 hectares of vines at a famous old chateau. In fact, the chateau has UNESCO protected status and actually has a fantastic history of, of high quality winemaking, although that's largely forgotten about these days. The vineyard resources, however, are mostly found in Wool Close, so a, a really, really special set of vineyards here. Also in 2009, they made their first steps into organic farming, not converting the entire estate, but initially just eight plots of Chenin. Now by 2012, the entire estate was being farmed organically and gained certification for that. And from 2018, they adopted a biodynamic approach to farming. To give a full picture of the domain's history, I need to go back a little to 2011, because unfortunately that was the year where Eve died. He was still a relatively young man in his 60s, but unfortunately he, he succumbed to cancer. It was in 2017 that Arno combined the two domains under one label, giving him somewhere in the region of 40 hectares of vines. These vines sit in three defined terroirs. There's saint cyr de Bourg, there's Brezé, and there's also Montsoreau. Now, Le Perrier is a single vineyard in saint cyr de Bourg. Now, saint cyr de Bourg sits in saint champigny but you can only use saint champigny as a designation for red wines, so the white wine from this vineyard is simply a saint Blanc. The vineyard has a sandy topsoil over calcareous clay with an underlying limestone. Most of saint cyr de Bourg is quite uh, homogenous with its clay soils and that is supposed to give quite a richness to the wines here. The vines here are 60 years old and yields are limited to about 45 hectolitres per hectare, so not, not incredibly low, but it's part of the effect of the older vines that they will restrict yields and give you more concentrated fruit. The climate here is described as being semi-continental but with a cooling maritime influence. The vineyards are situated about 60 metres above sea level. Now, as for the winemaking, following a very selective hand picking, I've seen two possible ways that the juice is pressed. Now, they are somewhat contrasting. One suggests that the fruit was whole bunch pressed, very slowly, very gently, and the idea that some of the initial pressings were discarded, as were some of the later pressings just going into regional wines instead of the main wine. And that strikes me as being more like the way that, a, that one would normally make a sparkling wine, although it's not impossible that you'd make a still wine in that way. The other the other approach I've, suge I've seen suggests that the fruit is entirely destemmed. So I, I, th I think it's probable that the fruit was destemmed and then gently pressed. The juice was placed in a combination of barriques and foudre, all made of French oak and the majority of that seasoned oak. Fermentation commenced using indigenous yeasts. So those yeasts that were already operating in the winery or that came into the winery on the fruit. The half of the wine that fermented in barriques ferments at about 20 degrees 
Celsius. So possibly that's in a room cooling it down, but generally the, the small barrel allows the dissipation of heat and, and so you end up with a slightly warmer ferment. The portion, the half that fermented in the Foudre, we're told ferments at about 17 degrees C. So to do that, you might, you would have a, a cooling element inside the Foudre to, to just slow the cooling there and would give a slightly more aromatic style to the fruit. So there's, there's a combination of the two. And the wine stays in the barriques or the Foudre with a portion of its lees which I think may be stirred once or twice during the 12 months in which it ages. Fermentation would have been allowed to go on for about three or four weeks. A portion of the wine would also have gone through malolactic conversion. Now, I'm not sure exactly how much, possibly somewhere up to 50%, but probably more likely sort of 20% or so. After 12 months aging in barrel, the wine was bottled, and it's only at this stage that Arno adds sulphur dioxide. It's not used anywhere earlier in the in the process, as he feels that that prevents the wine from de from developing its more delicate, elegant flavours fully during the winemaking process. So let's have a look at the wine, shall we? So the first thing I note is there's a really lovely depth to the colour, medium to full yellow sort of colour. Now the wine doesn't actually have an alcohol level on its label, which is a little poor. Presumably it should have a back label with that, but perhaps the importer to New Zealand has neglected to put that on there. They do give the volume of drinks, but not the actual alcohol volume. Other information I've seen shows the, the alcohol level at 13.5, and that, that would seem about right. So swelling it, despite its 13.5% alcohol, it's not particularly throwing legs on the, the glass. Possibly there are some tears there, but but in general, it's not particularly viscous. And this will be a dry wine. I believe it's got just a shade over four grams per litre of sugar. So let's see what we make of the aromas. The aromas are rich and it's quite a classic Chenin aroma, sort of a bruised apple note. There are notes of apple, pear, perhaps quince, but there is that slight sort of slightly, I'd say browning, bruised sort of note. It's a slightly waxy lanolin texture, but that's actually only quite sort of gentle on the nose. It is mostly that sort of developed apple note. So let's have a taste. The wine is mouth filling, it's rich. There's an obvious ripeness to the fruit. It's medium to full bodied. There's not particularly a sort of a phenol, there's, you know, it's not a weighty phenolic note. There. It's a very pure, clean note and that purity is being emphasized by some lovely mineral and citric notes on the acidity. Having said that, the acidity isn't sharp and particularly tart and so possibly that's the malolactic conversion just taking some of the tartness out of the wine. I'm still salivating nicely, it's a, it, it is mouth-watering but it's not sort of steely sharp and there is this lovely rich apple, quince, pear type fruit, beautifully filling the mid palate. The alcohol seems well in balance, it's sort of rounding out the, 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 the back palate there. And there are these sort of slightly developed apple flavours. There are also some slightly creamy hints, both in terms of texture and flavour, and I'm putting that down to a little bit of batonnage, and there are perhaps slight hints of toastiness. I'm presuming that's complexity produced by an indigenous fermentation. I don't think that's particularly oak toast that's coming through there because I'm not getting a vanilla in it. In fact, there's, there's not an obvious note of oak coming through there. I suppose the sort of the slightly creamy, mealy notes are in indications that there is oak there, but they're not actually direct oak flavors. The wine's intensity and its lovely mouth-watering acidity is giving it good length. Clearly a wine with this sort of balance, its intensity and the excellent underlying acidity has good ability to age. I would say that you could age this for at least 10 years if you wanted to. I think the richness that aptly note would develop more 
not quite like a botrytis wine, but you'd probably start to get slightly more honeyed, rich notes, sort of almost becoming sort of toffee apple-like on the mid palate. But as long as it retains that good acidity, that's going to maintain a freshness there that will give the wine plenty of ability to age. Looking at our aggregated score for this particular wine, we don't actually have one for this vintage yet. Overall, the wine has an aggregated score of 89 out of 100. But having said that, this is a rapidly improving domain. So I would expect that more recent wines would gain higher scores than that. I certainly think this is worth at least 90, probably 91, 92 points. Simply because of the intensity, the complexity, the length of the wine. It's an impressive wine with good age worthiness that is a lovely demonstration of the potential of Chenin Blanc to produce wonderful age-worthy wines. So thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, do please pop your, your feedback in the comments below. If you'd like to watch more of these videos, the best answer would be to subscribe to our channel. If you sign up, that way you can set yourself an alert and you can be warned every time we release a new video. If you have friends you think might like to watch the video, do please feel free to pass it on to them. I will leave a link in the notes below to the wine searcher page for this vintage of this wine so that you can follow that and you can see what information we have about it there information about the region information about the variety information about the vintage the critics notes any awards it's won and all sorts of background detail like that so hopefully all the information you'd possibly want is available if you follow that link so once again thank you for joining us and i do hope you'll manage to make some time and come and join us for another tasting in the very near future Bye for now.